friends. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my first thoughts on the brand new Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Pencils. I'm so excited that I was able to work with them, so I put together a little video sharing my thoughts while I'm coloring and creating a card with them. These watercolor pencils are woodless, which means the entire pencil is pigment. The wrapper is not removable, but when you go to sharpen the pencils, you can easily sharpen right through the wrapper. They come in three sets of 12 colors, and each tin has a rainbow of colors, making it perfect to color all the things with just one set if you're just wanting to try them out before investing in all three sets. Here I've stamped some images onto Distress watercolor paper using archival ink. This ink is perfect for using with watercoloring because it's permanent and won't bleed when you add the water or ink. The only other tool I'll be using is a water brush, but you can also use a paintbrush to blend out the pigment. You might not think you need watercolor pencils, and maybe you don't. Watercoloring isn't for everyone, and there are a lot of options out there if that's your thing. I'm no watercolor expert, but I love to do a bit of amateur watercoloring every now and then. In the past, I've done it using Distress ink pads. I tap the pad onto my craft mat and use a water brush to pick up the ink and apply it to my paper. One of the first things I love about these pencils versus the ink pads is that I'm not wasting so much ink. With the pencils, you can color just a tiny bit right where you want it and use the water brush to spread it out over the area. Next, I love that I can get a lot of pigment right where I want it. If you watch me while I'm coloring these flowers, I color where the darkest shadow area is and then use the water brush to thin it out and create the variation in dark and light. Having that control with smaller areas is really great. To get that much color with the ink pads usually requires making sure that your brush doesn't have too much water on it or the color gets washed out, which then requires applying more layers of ink which is fine, but doesn't make it a very fast process. The next thing that is great about them is that after fussy cutting the flowers, I was able to use the pencils to apply color right where I wanted it, in the spaces that I couldn't get to with my scissors. I used the Salvage Patina watercolor pencil to match the Salvage Patina Distress Ink Blended area that I created behind the floral bouquet. By the way, this isn't the background I end up using on this card, but I'll show you how I created the final version in just a few. The ability to color match leads me to my next and probably favorite thing. These watercolor pencils are part of the Distress line, so they match the Distress line. Salvage Patina is Salvage Patina, and in my book, that color matching is everything. So if you're already a Distress color lover, these pencils are a perfect fit if you're looking for a matching coloring option. Here I'm working on the background that I do end up using on this card. I stamped the text image from the Professor 2 stamp set with T-dye oxide ink onto Distress watercolor paper and smudged the ink with a paper towel before it dries. Next, I spritzed the paper with water using my Distress sprayer to activate the ink and add a distressed effect, and then I dry it using my heap tool. Earlier, I mentioned that I had colored in the spaces of the fussy cut florals that I couldn't reach with my scissors. Here I'm ink blending a bit of Salvaged Patina Distress ink using a foam blending tool to the center of the panel. Now I'm placing a stencil over the image and using the Kitsch Flamingo watercolor pencil to add some color in the openings of the stencil.
I then use the water brush to blend the ink. It's a subtle effect, but I love what it adds to the background. To make it pop just a bit more, I'm adding picked raspberry to some of the polka dots and then blending it out using the water brush. As I mentioned earlier, you can easily sharpen the pencils using a pencil sharpener. These pencils are just slightly larger than a standard pencil, so they may or may not fit in your current pencil sharpener. This is just something to keep in mind. Here I'm using the Prismacolor pencil sharpener and it works perfectly and it's not very expensive. And yes, that butterfly was colored with the pencils as well and you can see more photos of it in this finished card over on my blog using the link in the description box. I hope I've answered some of the questions you might have about these Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Pencils. If you have a question that I haven't answered, feel free to ask. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time. Thanks so much for watching. I'm truly grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much and it would mean so much to me to have your support.